as you said, I'm the news editor at TechCrunch. And with us today, we have a panel of three really experienced experts in quantum computing in the aerospace world. And maybe to get started, why don't you introduce yourself? And um, Maybe Jay, you can go first. Uh, thanks, Frederick. Um, my name is Jay Lowell. I'm the chief engineer for Boeing's Disruptive Computing and Networks organization, and I manage our portfolio of quantum technology projects. And Thierry, why don't you go next? Yeah, Thierry Botter. I'm head of Airbus Blue Sky, looking at a number of different upstream topics, including quantum technologies. Um, and in, in addition, um, member of the Strategic Advisory Board to Europe's quantum flagship. And last, but uh, definitely not least, Tom. <laughs> Just... Hi, my name is uh, Thomas Oki. <laughs> I'm the um, group leader of the quantum computing group at uh, Raytheon BBN Technologies. Uh, we, uh, we look into quantum computing, but also other sorts of advanced uh, quantum enabling technology. It's not often you get a panel of, you know, experts in the industry that, you know, not just in the industry, but also competitors to some degree working together on a panel like this. Maybe to get started, uh, it'd be interesting to know what is it that you're currently doing in quantum computing? And, and Jay, maybe talk us through what, what Boeing is currently doing and how much of that is still experimentation and how much you're actually putting into you know, production. So we're still very much um, working on the experimental front in quantum computing. Um, our main area of exploration really is on the quantum computing, using that to understand the chemistry of corrosion in our products. Um, we feel corrosion is a, is a huge drain on the productivity of the aerospace industry as a whole. And anything we can do to help improve the corrosion resistance of our products is worth spending time on. And so we've been investigating that. Um, what we're finding is it's not simply a matter of applying a quantum algorithm to some particular calculation, but really we're having to go in, really understand what it is that we need to learn about, what are the characteristics we need to get, and how do we use a wide range of various algorithms and methods and bring all those together to get that out. Um, we, we were doing other things as well, optimization of routes and working on quantum sensors, but for computing, our focus is on materials. Got it. Are you doing any fundamental research? Is your, your focus mostly on application? Um, yeah, I would describe it as fundamental research on that application. It's, it's <laughs> really basic quantum chemistry at this point. Mm, got it. Got it. Now, your friends over at Airbus are doing probably something similar, but Thierry, why don't you walk us through what, what your focus is right now? Yeah, um, we've uh, taken the challenge to look at quantum computing and look at different aspects of it and different ways in which it can help us. Um, one of the first topics, one of the first areas we looked at was uh, so-called fault tree analyses. These are trying to understand large complex engineering systems and understand the mechanisms, the redundancies that are put in there to avoid uh, failures to see how well that works. And modeling that process can be quite complex. Um, we've moved on to other challenges. Uh, Jay mentioned uh, flight optimization or, or travel optimization. That has been one part of it. And most recently, uh, we had the Airbus Quantum Computing Challenge, where we yet went one step further. There, it was not only about the topics that we covered, but it was also the way in which we did so. We had a, an open global challenge uh, calling on the, the uh, capable individuals from across the globe who are able to propose new algorithms, new methods, new tools um, to submit their ideas and how they could uh, support uh, five flight physics problems that we had put forward. And so our exploration has been quite varied. Uh, I shared a few, a few examples here, and it also goes beyond quantum computing uh, we do have activities also pertaining to quantum communication, ensuring that our uh, communication systems can be secured against uh, the, the development of quantum computers and the threat that they might pose on, on different communication systems, and as well, quantum sensing for inertial navigation. Very cool. I know you, Tom, at, at Raytheon, you've, you've got quite a broad portfolio as well, right? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> historically, uh, Raytheon, uh, BBN Technologies um, has been involved in quantum communications very early in uh, quantum key distribution and things like that. But uh, quantum computing has become a focus of the, the, um, uh, the quantum engineering group. 
uh, and the really, I mean, a lot of the focus was on uh, research towards fault tolerant quantum computing systems, and so this is um, <clears throat> really one of the main goals towards uh, cryptographic efforts, and that was uh, largely what we worked with the government on. Uh, but in eye towards NISC applications, and I'm sure in this meeting uh, we've heard a lot about different NISC applications, and so the types of things with respect to applications and uh, use cases which tie into the broader uh, Raytheon technologies uh, are things like you already heard about optimization. Uh, it's kind of a ubiquitous problem across the DOD, IC, and commercial sectors. It could be anything from transport, logistics, sensor deployment, and also scheduling. Um, in addition, <clears throat> there's uh, other things uh, such as um, uh, algorithms for solutions to nonlinear differen differ differential equations. Um, these potentially have applications in other areas, such as plasma and uh, um, uh, plasma dynamics, and uh, and also weather modeling. And so, fluid dynamics is part of that as well. Uh, so, th those are sort of application interests uh, from the NISC uh, side of life. Um, but uh, uh, in general, one of our main missions has been looking at sort of the um, the uh, the long road towards fault tolerant quantum computing efforts as well. So. And you mentioned the long road there. Maybe we can stay with you for a second there. As you're going through that that long road, what are some of the biggest challenges that you're you're facing, and especially those that may be specific to your industry? Yeah. So I mean, um, to to kind of finish up the, your question from before, we we definitely are in, um, in the weeds and the experiments of of trying to uh, look at how to uh, improve the. the, the properties of small quantum processes such that we can understand their scaling properties. Uh, and really, that, that's, that is one of the biggest challenges is, um, uh, as somebody who's developing uh, and, and has insight onto the technology, um, you see where all the, um, the, the, the difficulties lie, not only um, just physics-based uh, issues, but engineering-based issues and scaling. Uh, and so the cost in, in building up systems uh, uh, of the quality necessary to provide any sort of value to, um, to the community, to the commercial, academic, or, or whatnot, it is is a um, a barrier, but also just a, a challenging effort for any one company to, to take on uh, by themselves. And so, uh, the difficulty in scaling to useful size processors is one thing uh, that I think is uh, uh, you know can't be. And be under uh, uh, represented here, and so there's, there's other challenges uh, that um, focus around, uh, you know, lack of enabling technologies in certain sectors. Um, you know, some some issues with workforce. Uh, the other thing is just uh, um, <clears throat> stable government funding to push uh, certain research projects forward, etc. Uh, but um, the technical That's challenges outweigh many of the other aspects. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. It's, uh, it's scaling, obviously, is you know, something we've talked about in quantum computing for a long time. Is that something you think about a lot too, Jay, or what are kind of the challenges that, that you're facing? Um, right now, I think some of our more practical challenges that we're trying to deal with are things like, um, literally in this, in this environment, um, having enough people who can work in laboratories, um, given our social you know, restrictions on occupancy levels that we can have. It's hard to get enough people in laboratories to do work. Um, we're having to work on scheduling and things like that. Um, we're also seeing some challenges in the quantum technology domain, especially around sensors um, working across international borders. Um, we have subsidiaries and parts of Boeing are international. I mean, we have laboratories in multiple countries and we have subsidiaries in multiple countries and we're finding it very difficult to work with all of the people in, the enter in our Boeing enterprise who have expertise that we can bring to bear on this in a wholly cooperative way. And so we're finding that to be a challenge. Um, it's sort of related to scaling, but it's a different kind of scaling. It's right how we bring the people to bear on the problem from where they are rather than the problem, you know, to scale up to a per particular size. For sure. Tom, I saw you nodding there. <laughs> it sounds like, it looks like you may have similar issues. Well, there's, there's kind of what Jay's bringing up. There's sort of a correlation between scaling and also workforce and, and critical mass interests. 
And so in some sense, there's always been this mismatch it used to be between theorists and the experimentalists as far as meeting grounds on what's useful to do. And, and, and that's getting closer and closer in the field of quantum computing such that you can actually start thinking about doing interesting things that are that historically were more theoretically challenging. Uh, but still from like, there's another gap between say the applications engineers and the experts on that end who want to run certain algorithms and the actual practical hardware they can run on. There's even a gap between those people and the, the experts in the algorithms. And so finding sort of an application that you can map onto say a quantum algorithm that, that actually executes it efficiently is a huge challenge as well. And so that's one of the biggest challenges to actually sort of making practical NISC type um, uh, uh, really have some benefit. And so this challenge of meeting up people um, also like the application side, it's, it's, it's non-trivial because if you don't see a strong pull from what they're like a return on investment, both on their time and also dollars and bridging that gap becomes um, still, you know, a, a hard problem. Mm, so. For sure. I assume that uh, at, at Airbus, you're running into similar issues there, but any other specific challenges that you are facing right now? Terry? Yeah, I'll, I'll come back to um, the idea of scaling in one more. I think there's been a lot of news of late about very exciting development in quantum computing. Um, and it's sometimes difficult, especially with hardware development for end users like Airbus, uh, to, to make sense and to really be able to measure what does one versus another new hardware mean? What is the added performance? How to evaluate that? Um, so that void, that gap, I think has, has been something that we've looked to try and uh, fill. We're working with uh, partners in Europe uh, to try and propose different metrics, different methods. Uh, things that tend to go beyond some of the measures that we typically hear. Uh, number of qubits, gate fidelity, quantum volume was also proposed several years ago and is still being, being referred to. I think those metrics are good from a hardware vendor perspective, but from an end user, they're, they're sometimes more difficult to, uh, to absorb. And so I think in terms of a challenge that, that is present for really being able to take in this technology and use it uh, for one of our uh, various challenges. I think this is this is one area that we're looking to uh, to address. I would a... I would agree with that wholeheartedly, Terry. We find the same problem, and our and really yeah. have a portion of our team focused on similar benchmarking type activities that are more specific yeah. to the problems we're interested in. Yeah, and is what's interesting as of... well. Sorry, go oh, ahead. Oh, sorry. I... I was just going to jump on Jay's comment. I think what's interesting as well is the more I've had this conversation, not only within our sector, the aerospace sector, but even outside, I think it's you, you hear a lot of echoes. Uh, so whether it's with the transportation sector, mm -hmm. the energy sector, the banking sector, I think many, many of us are there keen to use this technology, keen to understand its potential, but at the same time having difficulty to really measure each new advances for what it's worth and what it, it what its promises versus what has already been done in the other uh, hardware development. Is that a function of how early we still are and we've got these competing technologies, just fundamental technologies, or is, is it that you think the issue will be with us for a while? Thierry? Uh, a little of a little of both. Don't you agree, Terry? Yeah, yeah. I, I would say it's a little of both. I do think that the fact that we're early on means that that question has not fully been addressed yet. Um, it's natural. Uh, someone has to start asking the question and then slowly, collectively. And again, I don't think it'll be any one company. I think it'll be as a group, as a collective coming up with uh, a sort of a coherent method or mechanism to try and, and measure that. Um, and I think over time, you'll see that more and more this will sharpen. So this, there, there will be some uh, set ideas, perhaps set problems that will be proposed uh, and against which hardware vendors, uh, algorithm developers, uh, software uh, providers will all be trying to benchmark themselves and evaluate themselves. And I think as you see this evolving, it'll be really interesting to see. I think it'll further accelerate the development because it'll give more meaning to the different results that are coming up. I mean, if you compare this to inter integrated circuits, I mean, to benchmark the performance of an integrated microprocessor in a standardized way across a wide, for a wide variety of end users, that was a 30 year effort in the, in the microelectronics domain. And, and we're trying to accelerate that and do that in, in a very small number of years. So I, we're on the front end of this. Um, there will be probably several of these kinds of benchmarks that survive for a while that are more specialized until we kind of get to some harmonious 
agreement of our collection of those benchmarks that works for general purpose. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah, I mean, now, um, to add here, I mean, there's there's actually benchmarks as far as a specific problem that everybody can target. Uh, essentially compete against to find uh, uh, the best solution to is, is something that would be useful. I mean, quantum supremacy was kind of a, a threshold that people were gunning for, you know, and it sort of drove the, the field in some sense. And so um, it, right now, there's not necessarily like a, a specific uh, application or algorithm that uh, I think that the community has, has revolved around just to, to focus on as that type of benchmark. But another problem that underlies that is that um, the characterizing and verification and validation of these systems is still just a research area. I mean, that's something that we work on too. So it's not even clear how to correctly characterize and say that performance is, is better in one system versus another and even within one X. Um, so, I mean, that, that is, that's the problem with the, um, or at least the, the interesting part, but the, the dilemma in the fact that this is science as well as, as growing technology industry. For sure. And you kind of hinted at this, but, there's also, you know, all this hype. How do you deal with that inside your own organization around quantum? How do you keep people on you know, with realistic expectations? Uh, I see you you laughing, Jay. There, you want to take that one? Uh, I refuse to commit to a time-based measure of our success. Instead, focusing on a performance or event-based measure and metric of how we are succeeding or not. Um, that immediately takes them out of this kind of, it's much different than a production system job problem or a problem of taking and, and building, you know, building the 30th of something, you can hold somebody to a schedule. Doing the first thing the first time, you really need to think about measuring your progress in terms of events and micro events and milestones. So we've really been very consistent about communicating our progress that way. Um, It's taken a little bit of time to get our leadership to agree that that's the right way to look at this field. Um, And and that we, I feel helps us internally because we are, we're, we're only looking to the next milestone in context of other milestones. And so it gives a sense of both the length that we have to go and how much, how far we are and how much progress we're making on that measure. Is that true for the rest of you as well? Yeah, I think there, some of what Jay was saying certainly has echoes for us. I think one one aspect in particular, uh, when Jay was mentioning these milestones and these or, or these uh, different events, even micro events, um, I think it's it's fundamental to have those. Um, working with a quantum computer means processing information in a stochastic, or if you want, pro- probabilistic way. So how do you make sense of an answer that in and it of itself has a certain uncertainty, a certain possibility of being wrong? Um, how do you think about a problem knowing that this will be the outcome? And within the aerospace sector, certification is a big topic. So how do you uh, absorb and make sense of those answers, understanding the, the, the area in which you work? I think there's a lot of work. It's not just in terms of the algorithms and the fundamental mathematics. It's also about the mindset and the thought process that goes into it. Um, and so in terms of those micro uh, achievements, uh, trying to use Jay's words, I think for us, it's been really important to uh, to bring about a different way to think about some of our more complicated computations and, and really bringing in and bringing a discourse and bringing a a reflection about how we can insert uncertainty, not as a flaw, not as an issue, but as a characteristic that we work with. And uh, it is a challenge, but it is also an opportunity. And I think this has been really, really interesting to see this grow within the Airbus family. Uncertainty doesn't strike me as something the aerospace industry likes. So that's something you have to nobody, sure work with. Nobody likes, especially those people who are responsible for certifying performance. It's almost like asking them to uh you know to dip their hand in acid it's 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 so (laughs) so against their their thinking of what they should be doing Hmm, for sure for sure i mean some challenges um like just to put a couple thoughts in the selling it or talking about it within the company that has a a time horizon on an impact like five three to five years is challenging um because then they have to see these 
micro goals effectively like Jay's talking about. But the other thing that's that's key is sort of from a tech development, if, if we want to keep the field moving is to somehow flatten the, you know, this kind of Gartner hype cycle uh, such that we don't crash too hard uh, when reality uh, sets in, you know. So I think we're right at that point where flattening that is very important for the for the field and making sure that we we slog through and do the real technical work to, to achieve progress. So all right, flatten the hype circle. We'll work on that. It's my job, I guess, to help with. <laughs> thank you very much. I think we're out of time, but it's been a really great discussion. I really appreciate it. And thank you all.